Hello and welcome to Android Tablet Basics, an Android Video Lab module by Neutron Flux Lab. In this module, we'll be presenting some basic information about the Android tablet you see in the marketplace and what kind of tablet you should be looking for. Later, we'll show you some basic settings on a Honeycomb 3.2 tablet that will help you out with you know, getting familiar with the new tablet. So if you're thinking about a tablet, you're probably wondering what you will need, and the answer to that depends on what you're going to use it for. Uh, if you're looking for a tablet for fun, you're going to give it as a gift to maybe your grandmother, and she's going to play video slots on it. You could probably get an off-brand uh, tablet shipped to you from China, uh, and that would be okay. Uh, but if you're looking for a, a laptop replacement, you're going to want to get a big, big name brand tablet. Um, you know, I recommend that you get a Samsung Galaxy or a Motorola Zoom or a Toshiba or an Acer and an Asus. Uh, these tablets will will have powerful hardware in them that'll that'll meet your your needs for using your tablet and getting the productivity out of it that you're looking for. The key will be to get a tablet that has Powerful hardware in it. I recommend the NVIDIA Tegra processing architecture, uh, at least 512 to a gigabyte of RAM, and 8 gigabytes at a minimum of storage. Uh, you should look at a tablet with 16 to 32 gigabytes of storage, ideally, as that'll let you put uh, some high definition videos on it and will help you as you're storing files and creating on your tablet. With connectivity options, such as HDMI and USB and external storage cards, you'll have room to expand uh, and move files around. You'll be able to uh, get your video output onto maybe a larger monitor or, or a, a television if needed for presentation, or hook it up to a projector to really have a tablet that replaces your laptop going to be important a tablet with the 512 to the gigabyte of RAM and at least the 16 gig to 32 gigs of storage. You should definitely look at a tablet that supports Bluetooth or USB connectivity so that you can have some accessories attached. It's absolutely integral to have an external keyboard to achieve a laptop replacement and productivity with your tablet. They may be wondering, what's the big deal with the different Android operating systems? Well, Honeycomb is made for tablets, and you'll really get the best performance out of a tablet that comes with Honeycomb on it. You could get an off-brand tablet that comes with a prior version of Android, but you're probably going to experience problems with it. Any version of Android prior to 2.2 will not have flash support. And a lot of these off-brand tablets uh, are so inexpensive because these tablets are you know poorly made the circuitry and the processing architecture is not top of the line you have a hard time getting the performance out of it that you're looking for and oftentimes these off-brand manufacturers they don't pay google for the licensing rights to use the android market so once you get the tablet you'll be unable to download the apps you're looking for for entertainment and productivity you can work around it but you'll have to use an alternative market application, or you'll be spending time rooting and roming the device, and that requires a, a bit of technical aptitude and some background with Android devices. I will be covering how to do that in a, in a later module by Neutron Flux Lab and Android Video Lab. So let's get into basic tablet operation and how you go about changing different settings on your tablet. 